Welcome back into a Locked on Leafs, Locked on Penguins crossover here. I am the host of Locked on Leafs, Mike Stefano. Joining me is my co-host, Dave Morissuti. we got Hunter Hodes from Locked on Penguins with Pittsburgh in town, getting set to take on the Toronto Maple Leafs, which should be a pretty good game. Two squads who are really rolling right now. But before we get into the game and we preview it, I do. I think we got to take the proper time to celebrate one of the game's best players who had just an amazing milestone stone last night and that is Sidney Crosby no longer Sid the kid it's Sidney Crosby he's the man who scored the golden goal and the man who now has 500 for the Pittsburgh Penguins um I mean how special of a moment was that for you as as a, a guy who covers the Penguins I'm sure you grew up a massive Pens fan cheering for Sidney Crosby your whole life and you know also to do it at home and against the Flyers, it just kind of all lined up perfectly, didn't it? It was poetic. I think that's the way, you know, to, to say it, man. Um, you know, it's also his 50th goal against the Flyers. It came on Yarmir Yager's 50th birthday, another Penguin great. It was assisted by Evgeny Malkin, who has been there by his side, um, you know, ever since he came into the league. And, you know, and of course, you know, you, you nailed it. You know, it's, he scored it against, you know, the biggest rival for the Penguins. And, it was just yeah, really magical because, you know, for you know, of time about about a decade ago, I don't think any of us knew this was going to happen just because of what happened with the David Steckel situation. And then it got worse with Victor Hedman. And, you know, a lot of us in the fan base were like, you know, he's skating, but is he ever going to play again? He was not cleared for contact for so many months. And then you finally have the comeback and, you know, it, it felt obviously real again just because of what's happened since then. But, you know, it's just it, – it's hard to put it into words just because of what he's done for this city and this team. But um, it's something that I, I was looking forward to for, I think, a long time now. Um, obviously, you know, the, you know, his rival Alex Ovechkin hit that mark a long time ago, which is that's, that's he's the greatest goal scorer I think the league has ever seen. But, you know, just to see Sid do it, you know, against his rival on that night, just from, you know, just Evgeny Malkin. And it's you can't script it better than that and it came from his office you know the hashtag sit down low is a, a, a saying that a lot of us on penguin twitter use just because he's so deadly behind the net and he did just that you know you got that pass from gino and then just fired it glove side past carter hard he had no chance on that and you know it was it looked like it was going to happen a couple games prior i would have been probably more upset if it happened in ottawa because there was only about 250 <laughs> fans there or something <laughs> like that um then they so play new jersey the it's basically the janitors are there and then they're friends. They they get tickets to bring their friends and that's about it. That That's all that's sitting there. It would have been a waste. And one of the cooler things too is just seeing the bench all skate out onto the ice as if, you know, it was an overtime winner. It wasn't. It was in the middle of the game. But still, the whole team understood the, the gravity of that moment. The building was going wild and they all just, you know, legs over the bench skate right over to him massive pile up and it was really just a surreal moment yeah i mean i i didn't expect on honestly the entire team to come out i thought it would just be you know like a, a quick celebration you know just like for his 1000th point about that was about 2017 i believe when chris kunitz scored that but when the entire team just came on uh, off the bench and i was just like well you know it's time to get at least a little emotional just because you know i, I hope every penguin fan just cherishes this because you know, obviously he's on the wrong side of 30 at this point. Who knows how long he's going to keep playing? Nothing is ever guaranteed. Um, but, you know, especially just for a game like this in February where the Eastern Conference is kind of, I should say, wrapped up playoff teams-wise. The seeding is obviously still going to get, we'll probably get into that at some point. You know, th these are milestones that, you know, you're going to remember where you are, for, you know, just for the rest of your life when you saw – Sidney Crosby scores 500th and, you know, for the life of me, you know, had, had he not missed so much time um, with that concussion, we probably would have been celebrating close to his 600th last night, um, which is, you know, obviously disappointing though. I'm hoping at some point he does get to um, do that. And then, you know, seeing Mario Lemieux's speech, um, just a player, obviously that, you know, he needs no introduction. Sid, I know played with him for a little bit. And then, you know, his family is there. And they're, they're tearing up. And it was just a really emotional, I think, night for just a lot of us, you know, especially, you know, I wasn't alive for the peak Mario years. I wish I was just because, I mean, seeing him and Yager do the business was just incredible with how amazingly skillful they were in the early 90s. But, you know, I'm pretty thankful that 
I've been able to grow up with this player for, you know, two thirds of my life at this point. And yeah. seeing someone like that will never get old. And like, I mean, I can think back to when Sidney Crosby made his return from the concussion against yeah. the Anders. Like that was probably one of the better individual performances I've seen just because of the sheer emotion of that. Do you remember that game and just like what you were feeling in that time? I remember exactly where I was. Uh, I, I sat I sat down to watch. I knew it was going to be an emotional night. I believe I was only 13 at the time, if I recall correctly. I was getting ready to actually go to hockey practice because I, uh, I was late for it, but I didn't really care. And right when he scored that goal, I think it was my mom and I just jumped up and I just probably let out the biggest scream. I've, it was just – it, it was awesome. I mean, because then you saw like the, the the fans were just had the signs and everything, um, because you, again we we never knew this was going to happen again because we never knew if he was going to play. Um, right. So that was just such a talk about probably the most emotional night during the Crosby era outside of like, of the cups and this. I would say that's obviously right up there. So you know, I, I just I remember that like it was yesterday. I was surprised the neighbors didn't you know call the police or something just because we were just. So so excited, of course. They were probably they were probably joining in on the party with you guys. Yeah, I mean, I, for sure. Yeah, you would think so. One of the coolest things about Sid, and, and you know, I didn't realize this obviously until I saw them put out the graphic yesterday. But of his 500 goals, 107 different teammates assisted on 107 yep. different players. I don't know why that 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 is just such a mind boggling statistic to me. But what it what it shows me and what it says is just how go with the flow this guy is. Like, didn't matter the amount of turnover that this guy had. Like, you look at who, who his wings have been his entire career. Like, there's a couple staples he could be. I mean, Chris Kunitz was a staple for many years, but like for for a lot of his career, it, there was kind of just just kept churning out wingers upon every year. Whether it was Connor Sherry who would come in, Pascal Dupuis he had some time with Gensel with with Phil. There's you know a, a number of guys who he's you know been able to play with, and he plays and at, at the same rate no matter who he's with. And he's always the best player on the ice no matter what. And he elevates everyone else's game. And when I saw that number, 107 different players, it was just probably the most mind blowing stat that I saw in reference to like all the numbers that were being thrown out to me about these milestone from Crosby last night. It was weird. There, there were some players on there that I was like, okay, I know I didn't remember seeing him assist on a Sydney Crosby goal. It was just a great stat that the Penguins PR team um, put out there. Um, I was surprised that Gonshar was still top five because he hasn't been with the team in a decade. Um, that yeah. was definitely, I was like, wow, I did not realize. Um, I, obviously, I, I saw I watched him play so much with Sid. I just didn't realize that he still um, was in the top five. Um, Get Gino's going to be up there, and you know Gensel's going to creep up there for sooner rather than later. But it, it was pretty crazy, you know. You know, old man Jack Johnson is was tied with four with uh, Mario Lemieux. They both had four assists on Sidney Crosby goals, and just the, the, the both ends of the spectrum right there. It's just um, awesome to see. But I'm yeah, that that was really cool. I'm looking at it now, and maybe I, I, I want to try and pull out some really interesting names that I would have. Mickey Dupont, who the hell is that guy? Oh man! Like who is? It's gotta be. I, I think that's gotta be from like his rookie year or something. He, I don't remember him from any of the early. Me cups either. Years. Me either. But he's got an assist. He's got an assist on one of these goals here. Lyle Odelin. I've never heard of that player in my life. Lyle Odelin, and like. I consider myself, you know, a pretty smart guy. I I, I, I played vid the video game growing up, and to me, that always allowed me to know all the rosters and all the players. And and I've never come across that name in my life, but somehow, some way, he was able to get an assist on a Sidney Crosby goal. Um, you know, Rick Jackman, a, a throwback oh name there. Yeah. Zabinic Mahalik able to get yeah. Aaron Asham. Yeah. So that. many, so many guys were just like, really? I mean, it's it's actually hilarious to look at some of these names. Brent Johnson, Felipe, <sighs> Luca Caputi, former uh, former Maple Leaf, Luca Caputi, another one there. Just so many guys. Um, who factored into this to this fantastic milestone? But of course, Gino Malkin assisting on 109 of them, being the top guy, and it was just fitting that he also assisted a number 502, almost as if it was meant to be. Um, the thing that I think is really cool about Sidney Crosby, though, is that there's a large portion of uh, 
like the American fan base that that loves Sid for what he's done for Pittsburgh with Pittsburgh being, um, you know, just like a big American market or a good market in the hockey world. But then there's, you know, all the love that he gets from Canada. And, and yeah. when I think of my favorite Sidney Crosby moment, Dave, I'm sure you have the same exact favorite moment. And that's the golden goal at the Olympics in 2010. You know, and, and I'll always think of him as the guy who scored the golden goal. You know, it, I was having this conversation on my radio show earlier, Leafs Lunch, and, you know, it, it, the, the conversation kind of got sparked. Like, well, do you think of Sidney Crosby as your three-time cup champion for the Pittsburgh Penguins? Or do you think of Sidney Crosby or the guy who scored the golden goal? I'm curious to see how you guys define his career and, and how you first – think of Crosby because I always think of him as the guy who scored the golden goal. I would imagine Hunter, maybe you have a different perspective being an American and being somebody who's born and, and raised and lives and covers the Pittsburgh Penguins though. Yeah. I, I, I consider him, you know, obviously because it was scored against the United States. I'm not going to, you know, like that moment too much. It's probably the only time I've rooted, ever rooted against Cindy Crosby. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think, you know, the Penguins fans and you know, me especially, we think of them as, you know, the guy that's won three Stanley Cups, you know, and the second time they've they've gone back to back. Um, you know, I think a lot of us also consider him just a top five to top 10, you know, pure NHL player of all time um, as well. And just, you know, someone that, you know, when I – the city like needed like a spark for this hockey team because, you know, it was down in the ditches during the years before Crosby when, you know, you had Rico Fada as one of your leading scorers. And I mean, not many people obviously wanted to go to the game just because they were so bad, but you know, when the city badly, you know, needed someone to just give the, the, the team a spark, you know, they, they won the lottery. I know, you know, tanking and all that, but, and it's just, it's, it's been oh, history right, right there. So um, I think, you know, the city and just, all Penguins fans around the, 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 the world, excuse me, think of him as just the player that's won three Stanley Cups and the two Con Smythes and the multiple heart trophies and the scoring titles. And, you know, obviously he still has that golden goal because that's one of the best hockey hockey memories and, you know, recent memory. And I think of all time as well, just because of the circumstances and, you know, he had the world cup of hockey as well. But I think here, you know, he's just seen as, um, I should say also like a hockey, a living hockey legend. Um, I should yeah. say, yeah, that's that's basically what he is. Dave, um, how about you? How do you define Sidney Crosby in your eyes? For me, it's like a guy that delivered whenever called upon. Right? I mean, you talk about that those Olympics, and people were talking about how he wasn't performing. Like going into that game, he hadn't, you know, had the Sidney Crosby type of effect, and it's almost like. You want to talk bad about Sid, he's going to pull up and he's going to make you look silly. And, you know, I, I always I always remember just like the famous Iggy call too. like when you think of that goal yeah. and just, you know. And, and at first, just doubting whether it went in right at first, because you didn't because he started celebrating. But like nobody like thought that shot was going to go in, I don't, especially, you know, poor Ryan Miller there. But yeah, like for me, it's just a guy that had. So much pressure on him as a number one pick, as you said, Hunter had to pretty much revive a Penguins team that was, you know, on well, the verge. Not <laughs> not just the number one pick, but like touted as the next one. Yeah, right. Like you have Wayne Gretzky, and he's been he was touted as the next one, the next great Wayne Gretzky, and I think he's lived up to the billing. I mean, the, the term generational talent gets thrown around a lot, but I think when you look at it. I mean, I can't think of anybody else I would really put there who's lived up to the bill. And there may have been guys who, you know, like there was a lot of talk about Eric Lindros coming out into starting his career, but injuries kind of derailed him. He never really became that generational superstar. But Sidney Crosby did do that, you know, and he did that um, and probably the only one since Wayne. And then you could possibly, I guess you could put McDavid back into that category as well but you know i think the fact that he lived up those expectations and and you said it you said it right his guy who was called upon and delivered when called upon whether it was for team canada whether it was for when he was playing you know junior whether he's playing for canada at the world juniors or whether he was playing for the pittsburgh penguins he was called upon and he delivered and and he's he's one of the greatest hockey players to to lace him up i think we can all at least come into agreement uh, on that one 
Um, why don't we take uh, a quick break here, and then when we get back, let's uh, let's get a little bit into this game here tonight. We got the Leafs and the Penguins in Toronto. Should be a good one, so we'll kind of tee up the game and uh, kind of give it a bit of a preview. So we'll do that after a word from our show sponsor. And today's show sponsor is probably should have had it queued up a little bit here, but looks like uh, we don't have a show sponsor for actually the second segment. So why don't we just hear a word from our other show sponsors? We can just cut that and delete that and edit that out. All right. Welcome back into uh, the Locked On Least Locked On Penguins crossover show. I'm Mike DiStefano. Alongside, I got my co-host Dave Morissuti and Locked On Penguins own Hunter Hodes. Uh, The Leafs are hosting Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight in Toronto. Should be a good one. Should be a fun game. Uh, This was one that was rescheduled technically from uh, before the all-star break or before the Christmas, no, after Christmas was supposed to happen. I think it was like the 29th or something like that. And obviously we know that that did not quite end up happening due to the, the COVID pause and whatnot and restrictions and all that jazz. But here we are finally going to have that game and I'm excited for it. It's going to be a really fun one. It's got two teams who are rolling right now. The Pens, they've won four straight. The Leafs have won a bunch of games here uh, as of late. They're rolling right now. It's two powerhouses in the East. Uh, Hunter, from a Penguins perspective, you know, what are you expecting out of this one? I mean, I'm expecting, um, I should say, a pretty fast game. You know, I know the Leafs, they're pretty deep at forward. Um, you know, it all starts with their top six, which is just loaded with talent. Um, you know, Austin Matthews obviously needs no introduction. And Mitch has been great. You know, Tavares and, you know, Nylander and, and all those guys. You know, the Penguins have played Toronto um, pretty well this year. I know the first one, I believe, was the Mark Donk game where oh, I'm trying to remember. I want to say Evan Rodriguez had a couple of goals, but I oh, think yeah, it was a gross game. It was, yeah, basically the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins came in, laid a beat down on the on the Leafs. Yeah, we yes. remember that game. Trust that, me. that was that, that was I think when the Penguins were really dealing with their COVID problems. Um, luckily, yeah. you know, that's knock on wood, that's not the case. Um, going into this one, there's no been no positive tests as of yet. But you know, the Penguins come into this mostly fully healthy, uh, minus Teddy Bluger. Um, he'll be out for a couple more weeks. And then Jason Zucker, I think, is out for, I think, the next month or with a hernia that he had to have surgery on. Um, so other than that, um, they're pretty good to go. Um, Tristan Jari, I'm sure, will get the start. Um, they gave him the night off against Philadelphia. They got to give him some rest and probably also go get a backup. But that's, you know, I've been touching on that on my show for probably the last month because the backup has just not been up, up to par. But, you know, I always love when these two teams go out. I'll actually, I'll go out of my way to turn on the sports net feed. And that's no like disrespect to mirrors and Aerie. Cause you know, I like, I like the insight that mirrors gives, you know, Aries, uh, you know, sometimes he's a little odd as a color commentator, but you know, the sports net just, you know, especially for this game with how Sid just got his 500th. Um, you know, I, I want to hear just, you know, what the sports net commentators have to say. And I just, I also think it's a better produced um, broadcast. Um, I should say, but you know, these games are always fun. The second meeting, I think the Penguins probably played their best defensive hockey of the season or one of their best defensive hockey games um, of the year. Um, And if I recall correctly, you guys are supposed to have half capacity um, in Toronto for that game for the first time. So um, it's definitely, I'm sure the fans that are going to be in there are going to be pretty fired up. And, you know, I I checked the standings today as well. Um, third place looks like you guys are have a nice little cushion over Boston. I know they're hurting right now with Martian out due to suspension though in Bergeron, but you know, it's looking like it's going to be another tough first round matchup there. Whoever you get, um, it's the same for us, of course. But um, for this game though, it's it's a potential, I should say, conference final matchup. You know, if, well, I'm not going to make that joke, but anyways. Oh, you already did. Just by admitting that you didn't want to make that joke by calling it a joke. You made it. I hate you so much. We should really just hang up the phone on this guy. I know. <laughs> Not this call. Like, that's so disrespectful for you to do. We, we, you have two Stanley Cups in the last five years, and you're going to go ahead and throw that slander at us. I can't believe you did that, Hunter. But, uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I'm hoping that is the case. I'd love to see a Pittsburgh Leafs, uh, playoff series. I mean, to see Sid for a seven game series up against the Maple Leafs, I think would be fantastic. Like you think about the ratings that that would do, whew, yeah. that'd be unbelievable. 
Um, it, one of the things, though, that I want to ask you about is Tristan Jari, because he's having an amazing season. To me, he's definitely, as of now, on the ballot for, uh, for, for goaltender of the year for the Vesna. But how much of this, would you say, is, is him taking a big step and how much of it is kind of the system and the defensive play in front of him that's contributing to the success? I mean, I it's it's a bit of both. I understand that. But how much would you say is attributed to which end there? Yeah, so I think it's a combination of both. Um, they got the new goalie coach this offseason, Andy Kyoto. He's done a terrific job, I think, with Tristan Mike Buckley, which is not getting the job done. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things I noticed when the first season first started was that Tristan was a lot more aggressive. You know, he wasn't sitting, you know, way back in the net and just letting the play come to him. You know, he was actually going out and challenging shooters a lot more, which, you know, he, he didn't usually do a lot. And I was like, okay, that looks a little interesting. And, you know, I also noticed that his movement has gotten a lot better. And I think, you know, Kyoto has really worked with him with, on that. And you combine that with how good defensively the Penguins have been this year. I believe they're top five um, in expected goals against and actually goals against this year. Um and, you know, you get a goaltender who, um, you said it, Mike, I've been saying it on my podcast as well. He is a Vesna contender right now. And, you know, if you would have asked me and every Penguin fan after that series against Islanders, and no one would have believed you um, if, if he was going to have this kind of season just because he was the reason why um, they got eliminated. The Penguins were the better team in that series. I will die on that hill. Um, I'll say that. They had the better underlying numbers. They were scoring fine. Um, they just lost the goaltending battle. And, you know, that's the thing. It will it can kill you, and it can be the great equalizer. And, you know, they, it's the first thing happened with the Penguins there. Um, we know that, don't we, Dave? We know that very, <laughs> very well. Goaltending, goaltending in Toronto has been a touchy subject for many, many years. So finish up your thought there. I kind of cut you off. Paul. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. I was going to throw it back to you right after this about Jack Campbell because he's been awesome too. Though a little up and down, I should say, I guess lately, but I still think he's up in my top of the Vesna contenders. But yeah, it, it's just, it's been night and day. I think the big thing is though, I mean, his high danger save percentage is, is pretty good. He's saving, I think, upwards of 16 to 17 goals above expected this year. That's one of the, um, it was top five for a little bit. I believe it's number six right now. Um, he's just, it, it's really crazy to see the turnaround because this is the best hockey we've, we've ever seen him play. And, you know, I think most Penguins fans, if you were to ask them, they would have been like, yeah, as long as he's league average or a little above league average, because that's usually what the Penguins need to go on deep runs. You know, you don't right. need to be Matt Murray, 937 in 2017, but you know, you can be Matt Murray, 923 in 2016 when, you know, that's, that's a little above average. I wouldn't say that's elite, but it's still good. But, you know, he's been like. 930 good Tristan that is this year and you know it's 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 a major reason why this team continues to win games um he is he gives them a chance to win every night and you know if if he continues this into the playoffs because that's where you really write your redemption story uh, I think the penguins are going to be a really tough out for any team um that they play but you know I'll also throw this back to you guys you know Jack Campbell for a while there, you know, he he was also, you know, I keep I always check money puck and he's top five and goals saved above expected. His save percentage is really high. Did any did both of you expect Campbell to be that good this year, or were you just like I, I would hope that maybe he's a little average too? Uh you want to take this one, Dave, first? Yeah, yeah you know, like did I expect him to be to have to put up the number, same numbers he had last season? I didn't because you know the expectations changed for him. From last season to this season i think you know he dealt with injury issues he you know the the schedule was a little more favorable to the least with the all canadian matchups and some teams that just were not very good uh, he would go up against you know he got off to i mean the the start he he got off to made people think otherwise and then <laughs> things kind of were starting to fall off a little bit and i think maybe we're starting to see that you know resurgence a little bit I think he's somewhere in between of what people expect him to be. I don't think he is the, you know, elite, like Andre Vasilevsky type, but I also don't think he's the, you know, below average starter level as well. So I think what we're seeing right now is he's trying to find that in between that can make the Leafs successful. It's been a little bit of a struggle lately, but I mean, the good thing is that the Leafs have been able to keep things afloat and, you know, Peter Morazic hasn't been terrible either. So um, but yeah, I, I think his play lately, I mean, this is probably gonna be his biggest game 
in a long time just because it's against a good opponent and an opponent that has kind of gotten his head, I think, a little bit uh, with some tough, uh, tough games against. Yeah, it definitely. Last time that these two played each other, the time before, the first time this season, it did not go over well at all. I think we all know that. And there were some bounces in there, so it wasn't all necessarily just awful goals. But um, to answer the question, though, yeah, I think that he's definitely punched uh, punch well above what was expected of him. Um, I don't think we were expecting league average goaltending. I think last year he proved that he's a, a pretty quality goalie. But to go out and put out a 940 save percentage uh, through the first two months of the season is definitely not what people were expecting. And it's not what the Leafs were expecting either because they went out and they addressed the goalie position in the offseason to make sure that they had a backup in case Campbell, you know, did fall off a little bit from his numbers last season. And he didn't do that early on in the year um, when they first got Mrazic. But and then the next two months has been not very great. He's had like a 325 goals against over the last little bit, uh, a sub 900 save percentage. His, the biggest difference is the high danger save percentage. You talked about how Tristan Jaris has been really good. Uh, not so much for, for Jack Campbell the last little bit. I, I, I looked this up like earlier in the week, actually, and it was a, he was dead last actually in the last calendar month in a uh, qualified goaltenders for high danger save percentage. So that's kind of been the biggest difference between Jack Campbell in the first two months and the last couple of months here. But I think to, to Dave's point, he, he's not as bad as he's been recently. He's probably definitely not a 940 goaltender. Hopefully at this point, he can start to level out. He had a really good game on Monday when they got the win over, over Seattle. Um, and hopefully he can carry this over into this game against the Penguins. The biggest issue for him is with all these cancellations that they had through COVID or the fact that they weren't playing any home games, they were rescheduling all their home games. And they, this team wasn't able to get into a rhythm. And I think Jack Campbell was the one who got hurt the most by that. And now that they're starting to, you know, play out the full schedule, we can start getting back into that rhythm that he was in before where he was lights out dominant Vesna caliber goaltender. So um, I think that he will level off here and he's not going to continue to be a, you know, a 320 goals against and, a, and an 893 save percentage. I think Dells will go back up to roughly league average, if not a little bit better. Um, and he's in a contract year too. So he's going to definitely need to do it if he's going to want to continue to get paid the way that it was trending at least in, in early in the year. If you're a Leaf fan, I wonder, and this is probably a conversation that Dave, you and I can have maybe later in the week or, or, you know, on another time, but maybe you're a little bit happy that there was a struggle. Maybe it took that number down just a little bit, but you could still end up getting a, a, a pretty solid, solid goaltender. You could feel comfortable playing for about 50 or so games a season. Um, one more question for you here before I kind of get your keys uh, to the game tonight. But I, I personally, I, I think I have Mike Sullivan as my Jack Adams front runner at this point in the year. Just the amount of adversity that Pittsburgh has had to go through this season, and they just keep chugging along like it's a true next man up mentality. And and I always kind of like to credit the coach and the leadership for that type of success. And for me, Mike Sullivan deserves it. Is he getting that type of love? Is, is that talk kind of coming around in, in Pittsburgh? Are you chatting about that at Locked On Pens? Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, you know, it, it's always been as the two best coaches in franchise history, him and Badger Bob, you know, obviously, wow. Bobby, of course. Um, he's, I think we're st people are starting to talk about how he's probably passing Badger at this point. And don't get me wrong, you know, what he did was nothing short of incredible. Um, but with what Mike has been doing ever since he took over, um, I don't think there's a better coach than him that has coached this franchise. And I, I might get some heat for that because I didn't, I was not alive to watch those teams that Badger Bob had, but I also know, I do know because that how much he meant to the team. And I know that's obviously Scotty took over after he passed away, but you know, just with how this team continues to win with four of their top nine forwards out or five of their top nine forwards out or half of their defensive corps out, or, you know, their starting goaltender out, at times with COVID and all that. Heck, even last year, you know, they were top uh, top five in man games lost. They won probably the toughest division in hockey, and they got home ice out of it, you know, right now. 
um, they are are on pace again to win the Metropolitan Division right now. And I know the top four teams are pretty good, and the bottom four teams are not. But you know, in my view, he is one of the three best coaches in hockey. To me, it's probably him, John Cooper, and Barry Trotz at the very tippy top. And then I think it's everyone else. You know, the job that he has done with this team is nothing short of incredible. Um, you know, it's his system, you know, it requires a 100% buy-in, you know, when, when it looks great, you know, the, uh, the team obviously looks great, but when, when it's lacking, you know, the team is obviously struggling and, you know, there's, there's been quite a few games where, you know, the Penguins are not bringing it just because his system is hard to play on a consistent basis, but when it, ha- when it works and it, it works quite a bit, um, they are a treat to watch um at both ends of the at both ends of the rink and usually you know a lot of coaches have short shelf lives you know he's one of the most 10 longer tenured coaches in the league right now um i know for a fact that all the players in that locker room and in that organization respect him for what he has done um because you know i've seen some fans sometimes clamor for him to yeah get out of here and go find another job i just don't take that stuff seriously because um, you know, he's, he's not the reason why they've lost a couple of times in the last couple of years. They've, they've had just, I think more poor goaltending and they haven't finished their chances, even though they've outplayed the other two teams, but, um, th- this city will always be lucky to have him. And, you know, I, I think we are at the point that he is the best coach in this franchise's history. Yeah. I've got i I've got a futures ticket on him winning the Jack Adams over at betonline.net. I placed it. I think I was able to get him at about 12 plus 1200 i think he should uh, he should he probably run. should have won it last year and he wasn't even a finalist yeah so i i like those odds now they've gone up i think he's the betting favorite actually at this point i made this bet like a, a month and a half ago maybe mm-hmm. two months ago um and i couldn't believe the value that i was able to get there uh so so i'm hoping that he does pull through that'd be beneficial for both you and i that'd be pretty sweet but i had brian burke on uh, on my show overdrive today and, and i heard him talking about Mike Sullivan, and he was saying he legitimately referred to him as a top five to 10 coach in pro sports at the moment, not just hockey, but in pro sports, all pro sports. And I'm like, from, from a guy like Berkey, who's been around the block for as long as he has, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty high praise there. Uh, Dave, why don't we, why don't we start with, uh, with you first here? So to preview tonight's game, I figure we'll kind of do a three keys type of analysis for tonight. Leafs and Penguins at Scotiabank arena, 50% capacity. Whoop, whoop, let's go. Uh, so Dave, why don't you give me uh, the three keys for the Leafs to try and secure the full two points tonight? And then afterwards, Hunter, you can hop in for your three keys for Pittsburgh. Uh, I think for, for me, it's, uh, try to get it. You know, a jump on the Penguins a little early because I think, you know, you got the crowd buzz, get the crowd buzzing a little bit. Uh, I, I think that that would, you know, help in their favor. You know, they scored first against Seattle. That seemed to kind of ease the tension after, you know, pretty rough days in, uh, you know, Calgary and Vancouver. So I think starting a good start would be a good thing. Second, I mean, Jack Campbell's going to have to deal with some really tough, uh, assignments you know Sidney Crosby and Genny Malkin the Penguins have just a load of weapons so I think you know he's gonna have to kind of avoid those weird stretches where he gives up an ugly goal if he does he's gonna have to find a way to bounce back quickly because the Penguins will smell blood if he's not on his game and then a third one for me I think the Austin Matthews Sidney Crosby matchup I think I think you're gonna see a lot of Crosby and and Matthews if it's not Matthews is going to be John Tavares, but I think that matchup uh, for Leafs is going to be crucial. Should be fun. Should be a lot of fun. A special bonus one for myself. Um, fighting for for middle ice, you know, whether it's in front of Jack Campbell or whether you're fighting for ice in front of uh, the opposing netminder, which I assume is going to be Tristan Jari. That to me is going to be important for this team. You know, try and generate those chances from the slot, from the inner slot, get those good looks, and then limit that defensively because. You know, you allow Rust and Gensel and and Crosby and Malkin, you give them point-blank shots from the slot, there's a good chance that they're going to put those in the back of the net. So, you know, fight for that middle ice, protect the net, to me, is going to be a big-time key. And then offensively, obviously, do the opposite, cut through into the middle of the ice and end up winning some battles uh, out in front of the nets. Uh, your keys to the game tonight uh, for Pittsburgh, Hunter. 
Yeah. So I think the, obviously the biggest one for me, um, you know, we like to call this on, on, you know, Penguin Twitter and all that, you know, the, the vibe check kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it was actually started from Jesse Marshall um, of the athletic and normally how the team looks after the first five to 10 minutes usually will tell us how the, the, how the game is going to go. And most times if they come out buzzing those first five minutes, I'd say probably 90% of it, they win. So that I think is really crucial to me, you know, how they handle, I guess, you know, that re-energized crowd in Toronto, if they look pretty good, okay. I'll potentially pencil in a win here. You know, obviously, you know, that 10 to 15% um, happens a lot more frequently than, than other Penguins fans would realize, but that I think is a big key. Um, the second one, you know, I definitely want to, you know, this is the Penguins are going to have to run the gauntlet starting with this game. They're, they have the toughest remaining schedule of any team in the league um, during these final 32 games. Um, I really just want to see what they're made of. And, you know, they haven't, I think, played a top premier team in the league in a little while now. So, you know, just, you know, limiting the top six of the Maple Leafs chances defensively, that's going to be crucial. You know, you, David, you touched on the Matthews Crosby matchup. Um, I, I would like to think that if Keith maybe does Tavares, but I'm not really sure. Sid is just, I think he would welcome a matchup against Matthews, but I feel like it would also be, it, it can go either way, um, I, I guess. But I just with how said much better defensively, I guess he is now. Um, I, it would it's going to be quite a treat to watch. But you know, definitely defensively, just limiting those chances, and then you know, third, you know, just can the depth I think continue to score a little bit more. You know, Brian Boyle got his sixth goal of the season against New Jersey just a few days ago. Dominic Simone scored against Philadelphia, and Chad Riedel did too. Combined, um, they only have basically three goals. Um, this season, um, the Penguins depth, it, it saved them for a lot of the early season. You know, now it's gone, you know, I wouldn't say in the trash can, but it's gone down a little bit just because, you know, Brian Russ is on a 16 goal and a 17 game heater. Sidney Crosby producing really well. Jake Gensel has been awesome. Evgeny Malkin's been at a point per game pace. Uh, I want to see if, you know, some of these depth players um, can step up. And then of course a bonus um, special teams. Um, the Penguins power play has been much better. As of late, it started the season uh, near the bottom of the league, um, but now it's it's up, up in the upper part. Uh, I, I think it's, it's right around the top 10, if I recall correctly. Currently 11th ranked power play. 11th, yeah. I knew it was right around there. I just didn't know which one. And then the PK, it's been top three um, all year. I believe. Yeah, last time I checked, it was number two. So that's, I think, going to be a big key just because the Leafs obviously have so much talent on their top power play and they can just go full Harlem gold charters if they feel like it. So um, for me, those are my um, big keys in the night. And of course I had to add a bonus in there as well. You're going to have a lot of fun watching this lease. Well, maybe not, but it, it, watching this lease power play from a lease perspective has been a lot of fun lately. Like you, you, that was actually a really good way to say it. They can go very Harlem Globe Trotters esque and just zip that puck around. With so I much say it because the Penguins are the same way. <laughs> yeah, and 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 look, the Leafs have a, a top three PK unit themselves. So yeah, special teams is going to be big. I think uh, you know limiting both teams to just try and win this game at five on five. Don't allow anybody to get the man advantage. Probably a good key for both squads in tomorrow's game uh, or tonight's game rather. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, all right. Really appreciate uh, taking the time here, Hunter. And, uh, you know, I think it should be a fun one. It should be a good game. I think right now it looks like on uh, Bet Online, Leafs are favored. Leafs are favored at home. So we'll see what happens, though. But if you do want to place a wager, you can do that at betonline.net. But I think that's going to do it for us here today on the pod. I'd like to thank everybody for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to Locked On Leafs wherever you get your uh, wherever you get your podcast, also locked on Penguins, wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, Hunter, appreciate it. Enjoy the game tonight. Yeah, thank you all for uh, bringing me on. And you know, this is probably going to be an awesome game, so I'm looking forward to it.